how do y-axis reflections, x-axis reflections, origin reflections, and uh, line reflections work? So notice that when it comes to y-axis reflection, or um, you have to picture something with simple lines. So for example, before we determine the, uh, the shape and the um, corresponding reflections, let me draw s simple examples and then we'll see how this works. So suppose that I draw this line segment in the first quadrant, okay? We know that to reflect this line segment through the y-axis means that it will be a mirror image created through the y-axis. So namely, the distance of 5 that you see here should be the same distance to the left of the y-axis. So basically, the reflection that we're going to have will be this one here, precisely. The same length simply reflected through the y-axis, right? This is the same distance from the y-axis on the left side of it, okay? Now, when it comes to the x-axis reflection, uh, the tip of this is, as you can see, three units from the x-axis, right? So the reflection, the mirror image through the x-axis, should be in quadrant four. And what, it, what it's going to look like is this. So the tip should be three units, and the length, of course, does not change of this line segment. So as you can see, the, the distance from the tip to the x-axis uh, below it is the same as the distance from the x-axis to the tip uh, on top of the x-axis, right? So it's going to be the same distance. So this is the x-axis symmetry. Now when it comes to origin symmetry, it's going to be a, a little more interesting. So origin symmetry, uh, origin reflection means that um, the graph that you draw will be symmetric with respect to the origin. So namely, it, it should be reflected so that it lands in quadrant 3, in this quadrant. So how does it work? So notice that from the origin, since we're talking about origin symmetry, um, from the origin, just count 5 to the right and 3 up. 5 to the right and 3 up. So we should do the same thing. As you can see, the, the, um, uh, the uh, formula suggests that we should simply negate the x and y for the origin reflection. So if you count 5 to the right, you should, find you, you should count 5 to the left, right? So that, that means you're here. And then you should go up three. That means you go from this point, bottom three. And that's where you start drawing your line segment. All right. So this is what's going to, what the uh, origin reflection would look like. Okay. So as you can see, I showed you with a simple example. And uh, this example requires a quadrilateral, not just, you know, a line segment, not even a triangle, but a more complicated figure. But it will be harder to see reflections with this particular example. So I wanted to show you how reflections work so you get an idea of what it is, all right? So now that we have shown that, let's uh, plot the given point, uh, the given uh, quadrilateral. We have four points, four vertices, of course, because this is a polygon with four sides, all right? So first, let's plot the points. So negative 2, comma 3. So we should go to the left, 3 up. Okay, so that should be right here. That's the A. And then we should go 0, 2, so that's this one, that's B. Then we should go 3, negative 4, so we're here, and that's C. And of course, the last point is 4, comma 0, right? So this is the point, that's the D. So if we connect this, if we connect this, you will see what, what kind of a quadrilateral this is. It's not uh, like ev anything you've seen before. Looks like a trapezoid, but it's not because we don't have uh, at least uh, we don't have two sides that are parallel. All right, but uh, this is uh, this is what it looks like. Well, actually, <laughs> it happens to be a triangle, uh, even though. I initially wanted to be a quadrilateral, but it doesn't matter, right? It's a triangle. Do, how do I know it's a triangle? Because I know from the slope, I go one down, two to the right, one down, two to the right, one down, two to the right. So that means AD is a straight line segment. I didn't intend to make it a triangle, but it doesn't matter, really. It really doesn't matter. So we might as well put it as a triangle. So I'm going to erase it, and I'm going to put a triangle. Triangle, okay? Okay. So it doesn't really matter because the concept is the same. The, the uh, idea it is for us to properly reflect the given figure through the y-axis, x-axis, origin, and the, through the line y is equal to x, right? So it doesn't matter what shape you're taking. 
as long as you do it properly. So now that we plotted it, let's figure out first the uh, y-axis reflection. So we're going to name these a prime, b prime, c prime, d prime. So what are the coordinates going to be for this? And actually, uh, just for practice, I'm going to include the b. I know it's a triangle. We don't really need the b. But just for practice, I'm going to include it, just for the sake of practicing uh, changing the coordinates and working out the reflections. So, uh, so how does this work? So a prime, so the y-axis reflection tells us that the x should be negated, and that's it, right? So x is negated. So instead of negative 2, all you do is 2. So why don't we negate all the x's? 0 cannot be negated. It stays negative 3 and then negative 4. And simply copy down the y values. Those don't change, right? 2, negative 4, and then 0. Okay, good. So now let's plot those points because we already found them. So 2, 3, so that's this one. Notice right away, before I finish everything else, notice that the a prime is equidistant from the y-axis. Remember I showed you the, uh, the um, line segment example? The tips were equidistant from the y-axis when we talked about the y-axis reflection. So notice it's two away from both sides. So that means everything looks good, right? It is a y-axis um, reflection. Now 0, 2, notice that it's going to be the same exact point. And then negative 3, neg negative 4, right? So that's going to be here. That's a C prime. Notice again, it's equidistant from the y-axis, just like the C is, right? So that's good. And then negative 4, 0, right? That's that, D prime. Notice it's four, dis uh, 4 units away from the uh, y-axis, and the original D point is also 4 units away. Beautiful, right? So that's good. So let's connect. Let's connect those. And then we're going to get ourselves a really beautiful triangle, even though it intended to be a quadrilateral, but that's fine. The concept is still there. So as you can see, if you really use your eyes, you can definitely tell that these two reflect through the y-axis. You see how symmetric everything is with respect to the y-axis? All right, so that's the y-axis reflection. Now let's talk about x-axis reflection. I'm going to name them A prime. A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. So what does it say now? For the formula, it tells us to negate the Y, right? And that makes sense because if we negate the, suppose the point is here in the first quadrant. If you negate the Y, you will wind up here, the same distance away from the X axis. And as you know, the Y values here are negative, whereas in the first quadrant, they, they were positive, right? So this formula makes sense. All right, so we're negating the y. We're keeping the x, so let's copy down the x's intact. Negative 4. And then we're just going to negate the y values. So minus 3, negative 2, positive 4, and then 0. So let's check one more time. Negative 2, 0, 3, 4. You see, it's easy to make a mistake. You have to know what you're negating. Just the y values. Negative 3, negative 2, 4, 0. Good. Okay. So that should look good. And so 4, 0 should be the point. All right. 4, 0 should be the point. So we can label it D, D double, D double prime. Okay. So that's D double prime. Okay. So let's connect those now. So if we connect them, we should get a triangle that looks like this. Okay. So it's probably going to be harder to picture, but um, you see the black one is the original one, but this one is the reflection through the x-axis. Notice that if you think of the blue one and the black one, you can definitely tell that these two are reflections through the x-axis, mutual reflections. You can definitely tell. You see the C is four, distant, uh, four units away from the x-axis, and C double prime is also four units away. right? A double prime is three, three units away, and the A original point is three units away. right? So that is 
the x-axis reflection, the black one and the blue one. That's good. And finally, let's talk about, uh, well, we have two more reflections. Now let's talk about origin reflection, origin reflection. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually erase uh, all the work we've done because it's going to look very messy. Okay, so I erased uh, the work we've done so far because I want it not to look messy. If you want to review that again, just rewind because this is a video and you can do that. So let's talk about the origin reflection. So these we're going to name a triple prime. B triple prime, C triple prime, D triple prime. Okay. So uh, now the origin reflection, like we talked about, negates both the X and Y. So we have to negate everything. 2, negative 3, 0 not affected, 2 is negated, negative 3, positive 4, and then negative 4, comma 0, unaffected. So let's plot that. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see. So 2, negative 3, that is here. Okay. Oh, sorry, not 3, negative 3, 2, negative 3, that's here. Okay, notice it's the same distance away from the origin point as the original A. Okay, 3 down, 2 to the right, so 2 to the left, and 3 up, same distance, right? If you use the Pythagorean theorem, you can tell that the hypotenuse you create will be the same from the A to the origin and from the A triple prime to the origin. So now 0, negative 2 is here. Notice that in this case, the origin symmetry is like the x-axis symmetry. All right, so basically what happens is the origin reflection is taking the y-axis reflection and the x-axis reflection at the same time. That's the beauty of it, right? So you will be the same distance from the y-axis, as you can tell, from a to the y-axis is the same distance, and from the a to the x-axis is three units, and so is the original, right? So a, a triple prime to the x-axis is three units, a, the original a to the x-axis is also three units. Right, so origin reflection takes care of two of these reflections at the same time. All right, so that's the beauty of it. So this one is B triple prime. The next one is C, which is a triple prime, negative three and four. So that's this one. And notice it's the same distance uh, to the y-axis, three units. And also it's the same distance to the x-axis, 4 units, right? You can see 4 units, 4 units. And now negative 4 is 0, so that's this one. It is on the x-axis, just like the d. And it's equidistant from the y-axis, which is 4 units in both directions, right? So we confirmed that indeed every single point makes sense with the concept that both of these reflections are taken care of in the origin reflection. Right, so let's connect it. We'll use a straight line segment for that. Okay, looks good. And this one. And then this one. Okay, so this is the origin reflection. Okay, this is the origin reflection. So now the last one to take care of is going to be the reflection y is equal uh, through the line y is equal to x. Okay? It's going to be through the line y is equal to x. Now I'm going to erase this again, the work we've done. So now let's talk about the last one. So y is equal to x. So how does it work? Basically, this line y is equal to x will serve just like the axes uh, did before. Right? So this line... And where's the line y is equal to x? We know that it looks like this. Okay, so how about I draw it? So we know the y is equal to x have, have, uh, they have, has these points. And it goes through the origin. If you don't know how to plot it, just review that, how to plot the line y is equal to x. Basically, y is equal to x means the same uh, x and y value. So if you get 1, the y value is also 1. You get 2, y value is also 2, right? That's how I know the corners are these exactly. Right? So this is the line. So in other words, 
this is going to be just like the x and y axes work we're going to have to reflect through this line not through the axes the major axes but through this line and the way to do that is to simply uh, switch the x and y coordinates as you can see there's no negation anywhere just switching it right just switching coordinates that works all right so let's find these um, coordinates so we're going to name them a uh, a quadruple prime right because we already had double and triple all right and then so let's see which, what we're going to have so we're going to just switch these guys around. No negations, just switch them. So 3, negative 2, 2, 0, negative 4, 3, and then 0, 4. So let's plot them. 3, negative 2, that's here. Notice it's equidistant from the origin, and the origin is on the line, y is equal to x, right? So I, so I have a right to think of the origin as well. Right, so but notice that these hypotenuses are the same value. If you really use Pythagorean theorem, let's say two down, three to the right, the absolute values are two and three, and also the absolute values here are two and three, two and three, right? The absolute value means it's going to be positive no matter what, right? So think of it as a triangle. One side is two, the other side is three. Here as well, one side is two, the other si the other side is three, right? So it's the same distance to this. Uh, uh, reflection line y is equal to x this one is 2 0 notice it's going to be the same distance away from this uh, from this line right because check this out this hypotenuse means that you have components 1 and 1 and same thing from this b from the original b 1 and 1 right so the hypotenuse is the same distance right so that's good now c quadruple prime is negative 4 3 so that's going to be right here. And notice C is also the same distance from the uh, origin. as uh, C quadruple prime is also the same distance from the origin, just like the original C was. The original C had components 3 and 4, right, for the hypotenuse. 3 and 4. Imagine the triangle. 3, 4. Here as well, 3, 4, right? So the hypotenuse must be the same distance, same um, length. Right, so that's good. And then 0, 4 for the last one, which is this one. And that's D quadruple prime. And that's, again, the same distance from this line. And notice that any point we choose is going to be the same distance from the line. Right, if we, point, if we choose this point on, that, on this line, or on this reflection line, it's going to be 4 units away. It's also four units away from the D, right? Just like the D quadruple prime. If we choose this point, we have to think of hypotenuse as component one and component three. That means there's also component one, component three, same distance. If we think of this point on the line, it's also going to be equidistant from these two, D and D quadruple prime, because we have two and two. And here as well, we have two and two, right? So the hypotenuses, if you think of a right triangle, must be the same length. That means the same distance to the reflection line from each of these vertices, the D quadruple prime and the D original. Right? So as you can see, this works out. This is indeed a proper reflection through the line y is equal to x. So let's connect these, uh, these uh, points of this triangle. And then you're going to see that it's going to be properly reflected through the line y is equal to x. So now try to imagine this. Turn your head a little bit to the right, and you're going to see that this line is indeed a line of ref reflection for these two um, triangles that we created. Right? Because think of it as a, um, a, as a butterfly. It looks like a butterfly, right? With properly, um, you know, uh, uh, symmetrical wings, right? These, these look like symmetric wings with respect to this line of, sym uh, of symmetry, line of reflection, right? So I hope this was useful and fun. We've explored four types of reflections, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.